Hello and welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. This week, box rise isn't a thing at all. It's not, but impedance rise is. So here we have one of our low baller 15s and a term lab connected to our laptop for this demonstration. So what I'm going to show you is uh, going to kind of resolve some misconceptions about impedance rise and impedance shifting. So this one, for this example, is going to be in free air. We're doing it free air so you can have a better demonstration of why it's not just the enclosure. It is how the speaker works uh, electrically. So I'm going to zoom in here and uh, further explain what we've got going on. So what we've got here is the volts RMS, amps RMS, which you'll see the direct relationship to those with the impedance, Z, which is the real-time impedance, power true, which is the actual power going into the sub, and the frequency in real time, which we don't have anything playing, so it's kind of bouncing everything around there. And we've got the oscilloscope. So you'll see this is a clean, pure signal. <clears throat> we've got a America 12K on this sub, uh, also proving amps don't just put out rated power all the time. Uh, you do adjust the amount of power that comes out of it. So we're going to start with 60 hertz. So you can see here at 60 hertz, that is 57 watts currently, and 3.6 ohms. So if you do this math, it works out 3.6 ohms. If we go down to 50 hertz, See, we've gone down to 3.2 ohms. We'll go down to 40 hertz. Now we're at 2.5 ohms. Now this is a dual 2. So nominal, this is 1 ohm, and we're at 2.5 ohms by going down to 40 hertz. We're going to go down to 30 hertz, which is close to the sub's resonant frequency. And we're up to 15 ohms. All right, 14.8, 14.7. So there's no enclosure in this involved. But the impedance is different because of the electrical properties. Now, it's actually 20, there we go. 20 hertz is barely showing up there. But now we're at 10 ohms. So you can see, when you're near the resonant frequency of the sub, that's when the impedance is going to be highest. When you're on either end of it, you're going to have some troughs, and then they're going to go back up again. Uh, these can be seen on impedance plots with fail small parameters, if that's ever provided, which I'll show you up on the screen here. So what you have seen from this is... It's not box rise at all. The enclosure does affect the impedance. Uh, there's forces put back on the cone that also affect electrically, resonant frequency of the speaker enclosure, uh, you know, the tuning, that kind of thing. But it is not limited to the enclosure. So when you say, well, I'm only making this much power at this impedance because you're playing this frequency, that's not the impedance that it's always going to be at. That's the impedance you're playing for that particular frequency. If you go above and below that, that can go down. So if you're wiring your amp at, say, a quarter ohm, and you say, well, it's making all the power at 1.2 ohms. If you play different frequencies, higher or lower than that, your impedance is going to drop. And you could actually be playing at a quarter ohm. So you might pop a fuse, you might blow up the amp, it might go and protect, any number of things. So saying it just makes this much power isn't completely accurate. And when you say you're only making this much power on a burp, that might be correct. But if you're playing any other kind of music, impedance is dynamic. It's going to go up and down quite a bit. That's why it's called impedance, not resistance. Check out our other Tech Stuff Tuesday videos. Uh, we'll keep putting out some more Tech Stuff Tuesday videos on Tuesdays. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get a notification when we upload them on Tuesday. You can shop our website 24-7, 
emfcaraudio.com for the full line of EMF audio and Sundown Audio products, as well as SBC uh, cock boxes for RCA distribution, excess power, full line, super caps, lithium, and batteries. And I will see you on the next Tech Stuff Tuesday.